Any other Canadians here? <laughs> All right. <laughs> ScriptSwap is bridging the gap between industry jargon and everyday language by offering the same content at different levels of complexity because no one has ever complained that something was too easy to read. Let me show you how. We took this complex privacy policy and swapped out jargon to replace it with clear language. When you look at the statistics for the clearest level, there are zero complex words and fewer than nine words per sentence, compared to quadruple that in the original. We currently have plain language experts who work with our technology to continuously train our AI to take that complex document and reproduce three increasingly clear versions. We focus on document types to be able to cross-cut industry, so looking at the common characteristics we see across many different organizations. We sell to both enterprise and plain language experts. For enterprise, we will swap their docs, just like the privacy policy example, and plain language experts will pay to get access to our AI, which will swap both words and sentence structure for them to make it clearer. When you look at market potential, enterprise can use our technology both externally and internally. Externally for customer-facing documents like a mortgage, or internally for compliance and regulation. Externally, they could pull from digital marketing budgets in excess of $170 billion globally, and for internal applications, staff training, which is $130 billion globally. Now, the plain language expert market is about $250 million globally, and they're gonna pay us every month on a subscription basis to get access to our platform. There are many reasons why plain language is so important. Even for smaller companies with fewer than 100 employees, they can lose half a million dollars every year due to complex internal communications. And literacy statistics are staggering. Half of Canadian and American adults are considered low literate. This means they can read, but not well enough to read a food label, fill out an online job application, or in the case of my uncle, who is a successful small business owner, but struggles to read children's books to his grandkids. And in all of our major geographies, Europe, the US, and Canada, there's already plain language legislation or accessibility legislation. And we're gonna see more regulations to come. Moreover, plain writing can make money. The state of Washington rewrote a tax letter in 2003 to make it more clear. And then their citizens voluntarily gave the state an additional $2 million in one year. So for every one penny that they spent to make that letter clearer, the state made a dollar. 100 times ROI. And plain language is also, also a life or death issue. In 2007, the University of Northwestern found that older adults with inadequate health literacy had a 50% higher mortality rate than those with adequate reading skills. It is clear that solving low literacy is both profitable and urgent, and we are the team to do it. I have a Master's of Health Information Science and have been internationally recognized by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Previously, I was a research director overseeing 120 physicians at four different institutions. Darren has written natural language processing algorithms for Canadian startups that have had successful exits and holds multiple patents. And Chris is a full stack developer who has made architecture that can quickly onboard millions of users for companies like Verizon. Now, when we hire those plain language experts to work on those enterprise documents, they tend to already have their own agencies, like Enclair, which is three plain language experts out of Montreal that gives us capacity both in English and in French. And the University of Toronto is our R&D partner. So in closing, kids today can't believe that we used to go to a physical library to find answers to our questions. And kids tomorrow won't believe that answers online used to only be available at one level of complexity. ScriptSwap is making information accessible for anyone and bridging the gap between industry jargon and everyday language. Our overall market is in excess of $480 billion. Revenue from all sources is up six times compared to last fiscal, and we are now Silicon Valley venture capital backed by Adam Draper. We are the team with the experience, the expertise, and the mission-driven passion to make any information available at any reading level. Join us.
Is it on? It's on. Okay, your pitch was great. Thank and you. I also saw the time, you got the timing on great too. That was <laughs> wonderful. Uh, just a question on the AI. So um, do you, is it required that a human goes back and reviews the translation after it happens? And can you give us a sense of how autonomous you think this will be and if it's going to continue to gain an autonomy or stay at the same level that it is now? For sure. Well, fortunately, being so early stage, it's only going to get better and better. So right now, it's a very, like even saying 10% automatic would be very generous. Um, so it's definitely that back and forth between the machine and the humans right now as they're doing the swaps. And then the next phase is going to be moving to where it's just the human going back and checking it. Um, and we're because of the way that we're going to allow plain language experts to buy the platform and just work on it with their general agency work that they're doing anyway, we're actually going to build that AI much faster. So this is a recent direction we're taking, and we're already seeing a lot more growth. Um, I was maybe a little confused earlier on around who actually pays for this. When you say language experts, but also so what's their use case? And then enterprises, I'm assuming just to simplify documents for employees and customers, but what, what is the language expert? So plain language experts, there are 300 in our CRM right now that I'm uh, contacting. And what they do is those enterprises are already um, hiring those plain language experts who generally work in small agencies of anywhere from one to five people. And so right now, and I've started talking to them and asking them about their workflows, I'm like, you know, if you get they often work with a lot of the same industries, so banking and insurance over and over again. And if they get a banking doc, swap it down to be more clear, then do three insurance documents and then do another banking document. When I asked them, you know, how do you manage all that if you're doing probably pretty similar language, they said, oh, just all in my head. So what we do is we offer them a library with X number, say 1,000 of their most recent swaps. So they can see what, say it's APR, annuity, things like that, that they're swapping and what they've changed it to if they want to go back and use it, which is still editable. And then they'll also be able to favorite some of them, and that's their personalized version of auto-swapping. So not only do they get access to the overall AI, but they also get the, their customized version, which is really important for them to improve their profit margins. Are you seeing more traction in certain areas like uh, healthcare contracts, taxation documents, or insurance? Any? Being Canadian, healthcare is really tricky, actually, unfortunately. So with the single payer, it's not really happening. Interest, yes, but actual money, no. So we are revenue generating already. Our first project was a financial literacy project. The second one that they have the legal contract to hopefully sign this week is another banking one, specifically for their online policy, uh, privacy policy and terms of use. So insurance and banking has been a lot of inbound interest, wanting to use it for those customer relationships. And are you seeing any resistance from, let's say, the legal industry? <laughs> well, so <laughs> conveniently, the three plain language experts we have hired are lawyers by training, so that helps. Um, and what we say is the legal document you sign with your customers, keep it the way it is. Use this as an education tool, and it's all watermarked across to say, here, like, play with this, try it out, um, see if this makes more sense, and then they can refer back to the clauses. Hi, Chris Yeh, token mail for this session. Uh, <laughs> First of all, I just want to say that I'm actually very stunned that Americans are apparently more literate than Canadians. We lead 49 to 48 percent, USA, USA. Um, but seriously, uh, my question would be in the realm of go to market. So you have customers, you've got revenues. How are you getting those customers and how are you going to grow quickly? For sure. So right now, our, our growing quickly is not really growing quickly, so it's pretty much all through my personal network. So people just inbound, they'll see me pitch and say, hey, we want to buy this. And that's great, because they're highly incentivized uh, by it being inbound. So when we're doing our next seed raise this fall, then we would want, actually want to onboard legitimate sales individuals who can start to make that process repeatable on the plain language side uh, by trying to present at those conferences and getting it out there so that plain language experts know, hey, you now have a tool to make your job easier. So that's the strategy at the moment. All right, thank you, Melissa. Thank you.